Welcome to part two of our Scale Trains Dash 9 build. In this segment, I will be handling the electrical part of the build, and I will be installing RailPro into this model. This will be a more involved RailPro install and not a typical one. First up is disassembling the model so that we can get to the inside. Remove the coupler pockets from front and rear, and the shell simply slides off on the Scale Trains model, revealing the inner workings of the locomotive. Now when installing RailPro you can simply use an adapter harness and plug it into the RailPro module and be done with your install. I chose to go a little further here and I chose to completely remove all factory electronics. Using a soldering iron I unsoldered all the wires from the factory board. After the wires were clear I then unscrewed the two screws that hold the factory board to the chassis. and then I carefully removed the board from the chassis. In order to disassemble the main weight on the model, you will also need to remove this smaller weight found at the rear. Take off the screws and carefully remove the retaining clip, and then you should be able to gently slide this piece off uh, while keeping the wires intact. Keep in mind that the rear light will go with this. At this point, I can remove the weight from the model, uh, leaving whatever wires are attached to the rest of the chassis in place. Moving on to mounting the RailPro module into the locomotive. I wanted the module to fit down where the factory board used to be, but these two mounting tabs uh, were in the way and they kept the module sitting too high. So I used a Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel and carefully ground them down flat. At this point I took the RailPro module and figured out where I wanted it to sit and in which orientation. I chose to have the 6-pin plug towards the rear. And now for the fun part, putting the speaker in. I wanted to try out something different on this model and I had heard of TB speakers that offer a lot more bass so I use the TO2008S. This speaker is a fully enclosed design and has a driver located here as well as a passive radiator located here and the speaker itself is rated at 4 ohms. This is the smallest speaker system that they make and yet it is somewhat large. You can see the dimensions here and so it's a little bit tricky to install. Now I didn't take video of this next part, but I did get pictures of the aftermath. I chose to mount the speaker into the rear of the locomotive uh, near where the radiator uh, screens would be located. Um, I basically took the, uh, the weight, mounted it on my workbench, and then took an angle grinder to it and cut off what I needed in order for the speaker to fit. Now I realize this is a little bit extreme, but I wanted to try something different uh, and hopefully get a little bit more bass out of these speakers. And as you can see, the speaker box fits into that space rather nicely. Uh, the nice thing about these TB speakers is that you can grind down the enclosure to some extent on all sides in order to gain a little bit of extra space, uh, but be careful not to go all the way through it. And now for my least favorite part, the wiring. Wiring isn't difficult, it's just tedious. So I'll kind of go through my steps here as I do it. Um, basically I start with some of the easier wires first, which in this case are the speaker wires. I uh, will uh, trim the wires to length and then remove the insulation so that I have some bare wires. Following that, I put a little flux on the ends of the wires and then I take my soldering iron with solder on it and gently uh, tin the edges of the wires and allow that solder to flow into them. I like to use um, little clamps to help hold half of the wire. Um, I also will uh, put on heat shrink tubing on one of the wires prior to soldering the two together. That way after it's done I can uh, just slide the heat shrink over the joint and uh, then shrink it down. I use the smallest diameter heat shrink I can find uh, in order to uh, keep it nice and snug against the wires. Um, I typically will just use the side uh, 
of the soldering iron because uh, I have it handy and it uh, will heat it up pretty quickly and shrink it down to size. So now we'll start watching an accelerated view of the rest of the wiring. Um, after uh, I do the speakers, I'll typically move on to the motor wires, uh, which is gray and orange. And it's going to be the same process on both, uh, on really everything that I do here. Um, you can see that I tin the wires first, I cut everything to length, I uh, install the heat shrink tubing, and then I can join the wires and then get the heat shrink tubing into place and uh, shrunken down. As I go, I try to keep things as tidy as possible and get the wires into their final positions. I use LED lights in all of my models and the LEDs do require resistors. I found that using surface mount resistors are the easiest to use because they're the smallest. I get solder on both ends of the resistor, solder it to one wire, use my clamp to hold it, and then solder the other end of the wire to the resistor. I hooked up all step lights to a single output on the locomotive module and those are the black wires that get uh, hooked up to the resistor and then to the module. All the blue wires need to get hooked together. This is also the positive on all LED lights. They all go to the blue common that goes into the locomotive module. And so I've connected all those wires into one and soldered them all together here. And of course at the end I then cover that joint with heat shrink tubing. Lastly I hooked up the remaining wire on RailPro's uh, power backup module. This was a test version that I installed into this locomotive and this uh, acts as a keep alive. Once the wiring is finished I then cleaned up everything and made it look nice. I like to use Captain Tape as much as possible. It's easy to work with. It doesn't leave any sticky, yucky residues either. I use the Captain Tape to tie down all the loose wires, make sure that everything is nice and snug, that it looks good, and more importantly, that it's not going to get in the way of any of the drivetrain or the shell as it goes on and off. I like everything to look nice and neat and clean when I'm done. Getting all the wires situated at the back of the locomotive was a little bit more of a challenge. Um, I ended up using some clear caulking to mount that speaker. Uh, that provided a little bit of uh, isolation from vibration as well as kept it in place fairly well. But getting the wires around it kind of tucked in and things was a bit of a pain. After a fair amount of struggling I finally got the wires to cooperate and was able to tie them down neatly. After I tape everything down, I like to go back through with a blade and clean up all the loose tape, any ends that are sticking out, again to make things look nice and clean, uh, but more importantly to keep it from interfering with the fit of the shell or getting into the drivetrain or anything that could cause any potential issues later on. And you've seen about two hours worth of work in eight minutes. Here's the finished install. You can see how I have things mounted. I have the RailPro module sitting right above the motor and in front of that I have the power backup module or PBM2 which is RailPro's version of a Keep Alive. Flipping the model around now you can see that I have the TV speaker mounted towards the rear of the locomotive uh, facing outward. Also you notice that I have no wires hanging out. Everything is tucked in nice and tidy and clean. One of the things I really like about the Scale Trains locomotive is that all the LEDs, wiring, and such are all located within the chassis and nothing inside the shell. It makes it much easier to get back into the locomotive if you ever need to without wires hanging all over the place. Here's a comparison of three different speaker setups using the same sound file. 
All right, so some final thoughts here. Uh, the Scale Trains model is an exceptional runner, uh, very smooth, lots of weight, so great for pulling. Um, it uh, is fairly easy to work with as well. Installing Rail Pro was not that bad. Uh, it is a little bit of work to get it to fit in there, but nothing uh, different from any other locomotive. Um, I don't notice the decrease in weight, having taken out that large chunk of weight for the speaker. Uh, I do like the TB speaker. I think it sounds nice. I don't think that it's quite as loud as I would like it to be. Uh, it may not be worth all the trouble getting it in there, but uh, it's still okay. Overall, I think it's a, a nice model to work on, and like I said, a great runner.